Okay, thank you, Tom. I'm going to start by calling this meeting to order. We have five members of the board here. Um, we have one application before this board tonight, which is Town Fair Tire Center, Town, Town Fair Center, excuse me, Inc. Uh, and um, uh, we have uh, at least two parties here. Um, I'd like to start by um, uh, introductions are simple because everybody's names on the screen. Thank you, except for Carla, who's um, on us by telephone. That's Carla Louise, who's the vice chair. I'm here now. You are. Yeah. There you are. Sort of. There is there is someone with a two o three phone number. Who's the two o three phone number? That's Ralph Lowe. Oh. Okay, Ralph. Thank you. I'm the attorney for Town Fair from Connecticut. Okay, thank you. Hello, hello Ralph. Uh, so what thank I'm going to do is is um, is uh, uh, start off by asking, um, well, I'm going to ask if anybody here wants to receive party status in this application. And that would be Chuck. Chuck, you're on mute. And party status means you, you, you seeking party status simply means that you want to be able to testify tonight and that you may want to appeal a decision of the board um, in a future date if you um, if you disagree with the board's decision. I guess the answer would be yes. The answer is yes. Okay. Um, so I'm going to uh, square in everybody intends to give test. Polly, do you have a word to say? No, I was okay. just leaning my head on my hand because it's been a long day. <laughs> I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask everybody yeah, yeah. that intends to give testimony before this board tonight to please raise your right hand. John, are you giving testimony? Brian, John, Chuck, are you going to give testimony? Uh, those that intend to give testimony um, swear to tell the truth, nothing but the truth, no matter before this board tonight, <laughs> under penalties of perjury. I do. I do. Requires an affirmative remark. Brian? I do. Chuck? Chuck? I think it's an I do. John? I do. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, thank you. So um, I, I gather that, Brian, you'll be doing the presentation. Is that correct, John? Yeah, correct. Why don't you do us a favor, and you've been here through this before, give us an overview of the project. Um, we'll allow um, board members to ask questions after your overview uh, with the intent of going through the specific criteria afterwards. And then we will allow um, any interested parties to also ask questions um, after your presentation. Um, yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Bob. Um, before I get started, um, can I share plans on the screen? Oh, yeah, yes. it looks like that's yeah. uh, available. So let me just bring up a site plan while I'm talking. All right. So um, the project is um, at uh, 1239 US Route 302. Um, so the project location is currently the, the site of the steakhouse restaurant. Uh, so it's located between the, um, the Connor Brothers uh, office building, which most people know as the old Harry's building and the, um, the Granite Group plumbing supply store um, on Route 302. Um, this is a map of the existing conditions on the site, just so everyone can get oriented. Um, this building here is the existing steakhouse restaurant and sign. Um, and to the rear of the lot is uh, an existing single family residence. Um, the proposal is to uh, demolish both of these buildings uh, and construct a new uh, 7,270 square foot uh, town fair tire center, uh, which is a retail um, tire sales and um, they also do the tire installation uh, at the location. Um, Currently, the 
the project property is two parcels with a property line in this location. Um, as part of the project, that property line will be dissolved. Um, so going forward and in the application, when we reference anything about the property, we're referencing the, the, the two lots uh, as if they were merged together. Um, this is the, the proposed site plan. Um, so this will be the, the town fair tire center, tire center building. Um, Excuse me, Brian. Excuse me, Brian. I just wanted to know which two lots were being combined. Oh, sure. So um, as it stands right now, the steakhouse is on one property. Uh, single family residence is on another property. They're under common ownership by um, Steakhouse Inc. at the moment. Okay. So. This, this double dash line that runs north to south more or less and then east to west more or less is the current property boundary that will be dissolved as part okay. of this project. Thank you. Sure. Um, so this is the this is the proposed site plan. Um, this gray uh, rectangle here is the proposed town fair tire center building. Um, there's parking to the front um, side and rear of the building. Um, there are, we're proposing to maintain um, the current two curb cut uh, curb cuts on the lot. Um, and, and this is a little bit different than what we present in the application. Um, as we went through the process with VTrans to get our letter of intent for the work that we need um, for both the modifications to the accesses and the other work that needs to happen in the VTrans right of way, um, VTrans asked us uh, if we would. Um, be willing to work with the Connor brothers to um, close their existing uh, one-way exit from their parking lot and allow them to then use the northerly um, curb cut on the Town Fair Tire Center property, uh, well, the Steakhouse property. Um, and so as they approve the closing of this curb cut and the um, use of the northerly curb cut as a two-way entrance uh, as part of the um, access and work permit um, review. And they, they approved that in the letter of intent that we submitted with the application. Um, so that's a little different than what's presented in the application materials. We were originally um, trying to um, design this as a, as a one-way in only and it's slightly smaller. So this, this access is slightly larger than what we reference in the application in the letter and, and it's now a two-way access. Um, there's a proposed loading area uh, on the north side of the building here. Um, tire deliveries would come in the northerly uh, curb cut, circulate around a drive that goes up onto the, the back terrace where the um, uh, the single family residence currently is, uh, and then come back out this, this driveway on the south side uh, is shared with the property uh, to the southwest here, um, the uh, Builder Specialties building. Um, and we are proposing, you know, uh, uh, site lighting and landscaping, um, but I think we could probably talk more in detail about those kinds of things as we start going through the regulations. So I'll stop talking for a minute and give the board a chance to ask any uh, general questions. So, Holly? Question, is there somebody currently living in the residence? Um, I am not completely certain whether there's someone currently living in the residence or not. Um, right now, the, the property is still under contract um, to Town Fair Tire, so they're not currently in control of what's happening on the property. I believe there is people living there. So what happens to them? Uh, I mean, the, the, we're proposing to demolish the residence as part of the project, so um, if there is someone living there, then they will have to live somewhere else. Other questions by board members? I, I'm kind of, I know you're gonna go over this in more detail, but I'm kind of confused about the, the um, entrance and the egress, like how you, 
flow of traffic will work because it seems really um i don't know unusual to me so is, is is there only one entrance no there's two entrances so there's currently two curb cuts so i can show it probably um this has all the piping on it so it's a little hard to see but let me see if i can um well i'm familiar with what it looks like now but I don't know. We can wait till you go through the criteria. That's fine. Yeah. Well, no, I think no. I think it's a good question, Carl. I have the same question. I think uh, a lot of the other questions will will not be answered. What what I'm lacking is information on traffic circulation. Right. Yeah. I think it's what Carl is asking also. Yeah, me too. So if you would explain clearly to us and how you you and the state have arrived at traffic circulation and specifically as it, it uh, affects adjoining properties too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's it's a bit of a, a complicated situation to begin with, uh, and and you know this approach that we've developed in consultation with VTrans is is what we feel is the best option to sort of consolidate accesses and um, you know help uh, eliminate traffic conflicts to the maximum extent possible. So um, the northerly curb cut um, is going to be the main entrance for. Um, tire deliveries because the loading zone is here we expect to have about one tire delivery per day um and so that's going to be the main entrance for that then like i said we expect trucks to circulate around this loop around the back um because it's <laughs> to come through um this southerly portion down down here um so they would come around the back and come then straight out this entrance and <coughs> head back to the highway um, otherwise, both entrances are, are going to be open for um, two-way vehicle traffic, um, and that is partly because there's a, you know, this pavement area between the um, steakhouse lot and the Connor lot is currently just an open paved area. Um, so in order, and, and this was part of a, an agreement that the Connor brothers um, made with B-Trans as uh, part of their um, access and work permit was that if this site was ever redeveloped uh, and they were given permission to use this access on their site, um, that they sign an agreement with VTrans that they would um, close their current access and then um, use this as their southerly access. Now, I don't know that everyone, I'm not expecting that everyone from the Connor lot will come out at this location because it's probably a lot easier, especially if you're turning left to go. Um, back to the north and out at the, um, the stoplight at the intersection by the, the Burger King and, and all of that. Um, the southerly curb cut needs to also remain open in two way, um, partly because there is the existing drive that goes up to the um, builder specialty building in the rear. Um, and this um, is at a significantly higher elevation than um, our lot down here. So this way, if, if people aren't familiar with it, um, this goes up at re relatively steeply um, all along to get access to kind of the upper terrace back here where currently the, the single family residence and the um, builder's specialty lot is located. Um, so we need to maintain this access uh, in order to, one, get trucks to circulate around the site, and two, to um, allow uh, and maintain the legal access to the, um, the, the budding property to the Southwest. Um, I, you know, just given the location of the sign, um, which is up at the northerly access, I imagine most of the um, car traffic is probably gonna enter from the North as well, um, but they could enter from the South if they wanted to. All of the parking lots are designed for two-way circulation. Um, we're expecting that the majority of customers are going to kind of park out in the front parking lot. Um, you know, if that gets filled up, they'll start parking in the side parking lot. And the spaces around the back here are, are more for, um, you know, vehicles that need to be moved around where they're waiting for um, service uh, and getting tires changed and things like that. I remember seeing a do not enter sign. Where was that located? No, yeah, there's an existing there's an existing do not enter sign at the at the Connor okay. lot because this is exit only right now, but this is going to be closed. So this won't this will become an island. So this um, this area with the little 
grass hatching here becomes a grass island. Um, and it's a bit of a funny shape because we need to maintain this existing catch basin. Um, but this will become a curved island and the current uh, exit here is will be closed. Okay. So the, the, you talk about a saw cut pavement along the property line, but as I understand it, that's just gonna be all pavement between the new building and the existing corner building. Is that correct? Right, so the saw cut is just an indication for the contractor of where they need to stop uh, paving because that is the uh, extent of the property. So that's simply for the resurfacing, is that correct? That's right. So it's currently, it's currently just paved from all the way from the steakhouse building to the Connor building, and that will be maintained in the proposed development. So it'd be kind of free flow between the Connor building and the steakhouse, which there is now. Um, uh, there's no restrictions to vehicles. It's, it, it, I, I thought I, what I read was this was a truck entrance only. Yeah. So that's that's what changed between the time we submitted the application and then when we got the approval from VTrans. So that was our original um, conception was to have a truck entrance only, and this that was to minimize conflicts with the existing um, exit out of the Connor lot. Um, but then VTrans, after we uh, applied for our uh, highway access and work permit, they then supplied the agreement that they had with Connor, which they hadn't provided to us before. Um, and so that changed where we were headed with the design. So, um, it, you know, in consultation with VTrans, we feel that it's better to close this access and, um, and provide the access consolidate the access between the two lots at this location um, rather than trying to have a one-way in access which we needed for truck circulation and a one-way out access right next to each other. So now so traffic has to cross in front of incoming traffic. <laughs> yeah and in essence it's a shared parking lot then? Um, it's I mean there won't be rights to share parking from one to the other um, but there's so the their intent is not for it to be shared parking, even though it's, um, you know, the access is, is uh, available there. There are some existing parking spaces along this area of the Connor lot, um, which would then need some room back here to be able to maneuver to get out. Brian, have you, Brian, have you had any consultation with Connor to striping that lot to, to basically show a, uh, a, a drive uh, way for folks to exit that flat lot. Like right now, it's pretty wild west that you can cross anywhere, right? So it, was or there any barriers? thought given to that? I, or barriers or something? Yeah, yeah um, unfortunately, the uh, putting up barriers is um, not really feasible because we either be blocking the access from the spaces that are backing out from Connor, or, you know, if we tried to put some sort of island along here, you know, we'd start pinching in our loading zone, which is really only, you know, 10 feet from the property line over here. So um, we weren't really able to um, be put a barrier between the two lots um, without altering the, the function of the existing parking along here, which um, the Connor brothers expressed interest in keeping. Um, I think we could propose some striping, um, you know, particularly over in this area, because um, the intent is for folks from the co coming over here is to come down, you know, either come down through this aisle or come over to this location and then um, cross over to the to the exit. So, um, you know, we could look at a, some more control in that area, like striping and potentially a stop sign that's facing in towards the Connor lot. Um, might provide it a little more should be stop sign. <laughs> control. And, and, and then then it'll beg the question who who maintains that striping, but um, is it Connor or is it you guys? Well, what 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 do you and the Connor brothers vision will be happening here that will there be traffic coming in here, you think, or leaving here? I mean, it's open now. Um, best of my knowledge, there's very little exchange between the current parking there and the Connor parking. 
Yeah, I mean, there's there's really no, we're not envisioning any kind of common use between the two lots. There's no real reason that anyone would be, you know, accessing the state offices and doctor's um, offices and things that are in the Connor building and, and also intending to access town fair tire. I mean, I'm sure it'll happen sometimes, but it, I don't think it's going to be a very common occurrence. Um, I, I also think this sort of... Um, peak uses of these two are, are going to be offset a little bit. You know, you'll have folks that are coming in at, at work time, but, um, you know, you kind of picture a, a tire place and it, peak tire season, people are showing up there kind of before work and after work um, are really the, the sort of peak times that you're, you're having people show up here. And then otherwise they're kind of scattered throughout the day as, as folks show up to, um, you know, purchase new tires or, or something like that. So these are two uncontrolled access points. Um, I'll tell you what, we, we, we do have a criteria on access and traffic circulation. Uh, I, I would ask everybody to, to think about what we just heard and save the specific question for when we get to that criteria. Um, we've covered a lot of it already, but I think I'd like to go over it one more time because I really, I'm uncomfortable with it, I'll be honest with you. Uh, so I'd like to go over it in more detail when we get to traffic circulation and access. Um, were there other general questions about the use or features of this property? Yeah, um, I have a question. Um, so is it basically just people buying tires and getting tires changed or repaired? Are there are no other services? Right. So Town Fair Tire doesn't provide general... Um, car repair service. The service bays are only used for tire related things, tire changeovers, balancing alignments, that sort of thing. Okay. But they're not they're not like changing oil or um, you know, replacing well, parts or things like well, that. I I want to correct you on this site, we are gonna uh, do do breaks and limited oil changes on here. Oh thank you, John. Which, which raises a question in my mind, but I'm gonna save it for traffic, circulation, and access, which we, it's about where your service doors are, but we'll, we'll go yeah, over that when we get there. Yeah, okay. Okay, um, we don't wanna dwell on too much here and then not have it in the right place when we put together our findings, <laughs> if you will. Um, we have uh, some interested parties. Uh, did you have some questions? I'm not seeing them on my screen, Tom. Um, Can you hear me? Who state your name? Who's this is Chuck Cecil. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Did you, have, did you have a question? Well, the what is what's called New England Label Road now, which is the access to my property, which is where Builder Specialty is. Um, is that road going to be upgraded, changed? And also Builder Specialty does get tractor trailers up there. Um, as of now, we kind of pull into, they kind of pull into that, to the residence lot there, which is more like a parking lot than a driveway and back into the loading docks. Will that still be allowed or? Yeah, we're not gonna change that. And the road will not be upgraded. Okay. Um, Snow removal, I guess you've kind of boxed that building in there with little place to put snow. Well, we're going to handle the snow plowing and we have a snow storage up on top, right, Brian? Yeah, either up on top or um, we're proposing snow storage in these back parking spaces here. So if it gets to be too much that it can't kind of be pushed off the back. Um, yeah. back here, then it can be stored in some of these parking spaces back here and then um, removed from the site. Okay. A lot of this covered under the specific criteria. I think it was, uh, this is an opportunity to sort of get a, a better idea of the general picture. Excuse me, Bob. Yes. We've had somebody, JB, uh, now a tan, I'm just trying to figure out who JB is. JB, can you hear us? Who did? 
I, I don't know who they are. Probably wrong tell wrong telephone number. <laughs> okay. Um, unless there's additional general questions, so we're going to move through to the criteria. I have Brian go outline those. Sort. We do have um, uh, a, a narrative from uh, Brian on this uh, the general criteria. Um, and what I'd like to do is sort of go over that as. Uh, have you paraphrase that or cover that for us again? Because I have a sense that from your initial narrative, things may have changed a little bit. Ryan, you're on. Sure. Uh, with the site plan standards? Yeah. Great. Um, so the first uh, is parking loading areas. Um, we're required to have uh, at least 25 parking spaces on the site at uh, one per three, 300 square feet of uh, gross floor area for high turnover retail um, and not more than 50. Um, so we're proposing 48 parking spaces um, and that's what's shown on the, on the site plan. Um, there's been no change to that since, since we did the narrative. Um, I think most Vermonters can understand that you need a little bit more parking at a tire store in Vermont that you might otherwise uh, at a different kind of retail store so you can accommodate folks during the peak uh, tire change over seasons, um, as well as needing some additional parking space for maneuvering cars in and out of the service bays um, and such when they're, when they're being worked on. Um, they're all perpendicular parking, they're all 9 by 18 spaces, they all have 24 foot aisles. Um, we have two accessible spaces uh, right here up in the front of the building, um, accessible way in, all, along this um, sidewalk right in front of the building. Um, and then, uh, as I stated before, we've got a 12 by 50 foot loading zone on the north side of the building here. Um, generally, um, they're just loading directly off the truck uh, through a door into the building, so there's no loading dock or, or anything like that. Um, and then um, there's also uh, up here on the upper platform an area to store um, used tires for collection. So when the tire collection and recycling truck comes along, um, they come up on the back and back up to the tire storage area and then um, back out around the building. Um, we are proposing snow storage, um, which I think inadvertently got left off of this version of the plans. Um, but uh, these 13 parking spaces behind the building, uh, as noted in the narrative, is where we're proposing uh, snow storage um, for times when we don't have enough in our little kind of islands around and, and up around the back. Um, and even if all 13 of these are used for snow storage, there's still 35 parking spaces available, which exceeds the minimum requirement of 25. Um, any questions on parking and loading or shall I move on? A uh, question by members of the board. I have a question. Yes, Polly. Do you have any electrical, are you planning any electrical vehicle recharging stations? Um, we're not currently planning them. Um, I don't think we've been through the um, process with a uh, division of fire safety and, and I'm not familiar enough with their requirements to know whether they're now required under the energy codes. We may, we may end up with one or two, but uh, we're not currently planning them. That seems to be the direction things are going. I'm assuming most of this is short-term parking. Yeah, we're not expecting, I mean, um, anyone who stays for a while is getting their tires on or off, which means they're not gonna be able to utilize the electric charging stations anyway. Excuse me, Bob. Yes. So, uh, John, uh, in our earlier conversations with when Brian and I, you and I met, and you're on mute, John. Uh, we talked about the t the town has a need for tire disposal, and I think at that time you offered the that the town could dispose of some of their tires. I just want to make sure that you're still that mindset. Yeah, we can definitely, you know, accommodate that. Okay. Thank you. Chuck, did you have any questions on this criteria? Em Employee parking, is that going to be part of those 
Uh, oh, yes, thank there. you, Chuck. You reminded me. Uh, employee parking is intended to be up uh, in the gravel lot on the um, the upper kind of terrace behind the building. And that's that's included in the 48 parking spaces. Okay, the only other question I have is usually during, you know, the first snowstorm of the year, there's a thousand cars around all over the place. I just need to make sure they're not gonna block New England Drive. Yeah, um, Town Fire Tire is gonna manage the, the car parking in, in the peak seasons, uh, I'm, as I'm sure they're well used to doing. Um, but yeah, there, we're not, no, we're, we will not block any drives or, you know, be parking cars on anyone else's lot uh, in the entire season. The parking um, on the, that currently exists by the Connor building, will that be restricted to the Connor building? We, we don't have any agreement with them to use it. Um, I don't know if we will end up with an informal agreement, but there's no, um, you know, there's no, there's no, um, the project doesn't rely on it, certainly. And if the Connors wish to restrict it, then we won't certainly use it. Thank you. Any other questions by members of the board? Or interested parties? If not, we'll move on to access and circulation. Great. Um, I think I've described at least most of the access and circulation. Um, this is kind of the, the major change from what we had submitted, and, and I think we've been through that. Um, just to hit a couple other um, of the highlights, um, we are providing um, bicycle racks um, at the uh, end of the sidewalk here. Um, like I said, we have received our letter of intent from DTRANS. Um, uh, um, so uh, in terms of pedestrian circulation, um, as required by the zoning regulations, we are proposing a sidewalk along the front edge. Um, it's, it's within the Route 302 right of way, which was something that we discussed with VTRANS and, and um, they were okay with. Um, as some of the folks on the board, and, and I'm sure Tom, Tom obviously knows, um, we have uh, executed a maintenance agreement with the town so that Town for a Tire will be responsible for maintaining the, um, the sidewalk out, out in front of the building. Um, otherwise, there's some sidewalks provided along the south and uh, east sides of the building here um, that are intended to just uh, get people safely from the parking areas uh, into the building. And I sent that executed sidewalk agreement out to the board this morning. Was that a typo that it's with the, the state of Connecticut in the first paragraph? No, Connecticut is where Town Fair Tire, uh, their uh, corporate offices are located. Yeah, but why is the state of Connecticut doesn't have any responsibility? Do they? No, no, that's just that's just identifying the parties. Okay. Up there. Um, let's see. You're you're talking about uh, this section right here, Town Fair Tire Centers, Inc., Connecticut Corporation, East Haven and County New Haven, State of Connecticut. Yeah. Yeah, that's just identifying Town Fair. Just, just their corporate office location, Polly. Yeah. Well, it already says Connecticut. For, okay. Well, it just reads funny. That's okay. I just didn't know if it was a typo. Um, show me. Uh, there's going to be there's going to be tire service and. According to John, there's going to be other service offered at this facility besides the sales. Uh, where are the entrances to the building? Right. So there's the main, uh, you know, customer entrance in the center of the front of the building. Um, there's the loading door on the north side of the building. And then there are, I think, five, or maybe six bay doors along the back into the service space. So the, the retail portion of the building is in the and the service bays are in the back. Okay, that's not shown anywhere. Right. You don't so, have architectural plans to show that? Nope. Um, I, can, I don't think we submitted architectural plans, um, but essentially this concrete apron and the bollards are delineating where each of the um, service doors are. Okay. In the depths of the bays, you can see is there, I don't have a, a cursor, but uh, you'll see where it says five foot wide concrete. That line is the division, I believe, is where the uh, 
the bay the, the bays end and the retail starts yeah it's i mean roughly like a third of the back of the building or so yeah so all and vehicles it, all vehicles requiring service will go around the back side and enter one of those doors yeah so what basically happens is that they'll the customer will park in front they'll come to the front counter they'll meet the meet the salesperson the salesperson will walk out to their car you know see what they need for for tires and then they go back in do this do the proper paperwork and then our employee takes the car from the front to the back and puts it in into the bay or into a waiting stall to go into a bay and then once the car is done we bring the car back out front the customer takes the car and they exit So there's, little, there's very little circulation, you know, that the uh, just really more to come in and park, and then we handle this, most of the circulation from there. Yeah. And I'd like to, to talk about the two the, the the two curb cuts, the existing curb cuts. Uh, currently, you know, when, we'll talk about the suddenly one. Right now, it's 40 foot wide, and there's no division between the the rear access and the steakhouse. So we've reduced that. To the width of the current easement that 40 foot down to 24 and that's why you see that um, a little small curb cut off the uh, access road and the one northerly is about 40 foot plus wide and that's being reduced also to 24 foot to be more defined um, so there's definitely a positive to the to the two curb cuts being more more de defined and more controlled and that was uh, outlined in the letter of intent from VTrans. Yeah, yeah I, I just was a little confused by tr truck traffic only type of thing. So there will be no signs restricting traffic at either entrance. Either right. entrance is, is a big, available to employees as well as anybody else who writes, has a right to enter there and exit there. So right, and that and that that was the that was a change from what we originally submitted based on our um, you know the suggestion of VTrans and then our our you know um, negotiations in response to comments through the through the uh, access and work permit process. There was some discussion about a stop sign on the corner side of of the, yeah. and 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 also maybe some striping to try to yeah. try. Yeah, I think we can just put a stop bar and a stop sign right either on our yeah. property line so we maintain it and it yeah no i mean i think it. it it could really if i could just make a quick illustration um, you know it could really be as simple as um, putting in a stop bar at this location um, along with a stop sign um, and then a couple of arrows you know, and these would probably end up on the Connor property just because of the way the site lays out in this location. And that will, you know, help direct, I guess this one would go over here, but, um, you know, that would help direct folks um, to come here and then stop, make sure no one's coming in and then uh, queue up to leave out of that access. And again, I don't know really that there's going to be a huge amount of traffic coming from the Connor lot to here. You know, I currently do see people crossing across and, and coming out here, but the majority of people tend to go the other way. Like I said, especially if they're turning left, I think, you know, people who are familiar with the area generally know it's it's a lot easier to turn left up at the stop, stop, stop light that they have access to through the corner lot. Um, than it is from, uh, Brian, I, Brian, I'd make a suggestion to you that you only have one arrow on the corner lot coming out because as that's the way traffic comes now that's what the way people are used to the the, the i would yeah, try to, that's I, would a try good to idea. I would try to discourage the other arrow from people right. going into the corner lot so your left that arrow i would eliminate um i i guess that's fine in terms of the painting um in terms of the agreement that connor executed with b-trans the agreement covers two-way traffic so we can't even if we only put one arrow um or you know we don't put any arrows we can't um restrict the traffic going i understand but but uh i speak from personal knowledge my wife works at that building connor building and and uh that there is a good bit of traffic coming out of that way there is. Especially, especially folks who 
uh, live and bury. Live and bury, right? Yeah. I know this is contrary to the intent of. I know you want the traffic to flow, but I feel like if they had to go up, if you couldn't just fly out of there in a straight line, if you had to actually go right and then go out, and like if the barrier that's there stayed there, I don't know. I feel like that would be safer. Um, again, the, the removal of this island and creating a, 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 a lane that comes out of the Connor is, it was all conditions of the agreement that Connor made with VTrans. And uh, uh, this portion of the work is not on our property. So we're not entirely in control of what happens there. So this, this was after negotiation with VTrans and the Connor brothers, what was eventually come to is, and, and, the best um, option and also the one that follows that existing agreement. Yeah. I, I, and I like John's idea about putting as much of that infrastructure on, on town fair property um, so you can maintain it as part of this permit. The um, southern exit um, from the parking area to the exit road, if you will, probably need some kind of control. Do you have anything planned there, Brian? Uh, words, we you, you we were people planning. Going, you have people going around. You have people coming down from the other property. Uh, there needs to be a stop sign and stop bar there, I think. Yeah, well, that's, I, John, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that's any issue. We're having no, you, you can put it almost, you know, right as you go coming out. Yes. Of the, yeah, right there. So similarly, we can just, put just something that, that warns people look left and right, you know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's not similarly. a stoplight at that, where that road. No, no. Go to, right? No, they're, they're currently uncontrolled access and they'll, okay. they'll be that way um, in the proposed condition. There are merge lanes, which Vermonters don't know how to use. And a bike lane. <laughs> And I just note that, you know, a, a town fair tire and I guess a tire store, they're low trip generators, you know, except for, you know, a snowstorm, but. Yeah, I mean, on an average basis, you know, we, I mean, this, we didn't present this because traffic is a, a part of conditional use and we're only talking about site plan here, but, um, you know, we looked at the ITE trip generation between the existing restaurant and the proposed tire store, and it's actually a significant um, reduction in traffic during peak hours on the adjacent street. So your, your four to 6 PM kind of, um, time frame. You referred to, a, a memorandum by, uh, your traffic consultant. I did not see it. No, we don't, we don't, we don't have a memorandum from the traffic consultant. I'm just saying, um, DeWolf looked at the trip generation just to understand what it was. And again, we didn't present this as part of the application because it, traffic is not is a conditional criteria, not a criteria. Uh, but uh, just to, to follow on what John's saying, we actually expect that there'll be less traffic from this site when it's developed as a tire store during peak hours um, than um, the restaurant. After COVID. Sure, uh, you know, this is all the average normal situation stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. Whatever that is. <laughs> yeah. You'll have to yeah, write, a, I, I to write a new book, I guess. I think, uh, I think I'd like to see this control from this access here onto the south um, exit and entrance. I, I probably is war probably warranted, although I don't think you anticipate certainly don't anticipate trucks coming down the hill uh, and exiting there, but you might have other traffic uh, that going around the back. In other words, vehicles leaving the service area in the back are gonna go where? They'll be returned to the customer parking area in the front, so then the customer can come back out of the store and pick their car up. Similar, similar to most tire stores or- um, So the, the traffic shops. presumably would, would could go either direction and vehicles leaving um, uh, on the north exit, leaving via the north exit from the front parking area, probably ought to have a stop bar and a sign there too. That's my opinion. 
Yeah, again, I, I think that's, we can accommodate that. Just so that the through way, if you will, it will have the right of way. Right. Yeah, it, make, it makes sense. I think I've put some of these on the wrong side of the road. My apologies. Yeah, uh, that's okay. You're, you're, Talk you're going the same on the fly. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's kind of nice to be able to draw as compared to um, the way we used to do it. I, I learned a new trick tonight, Brian. You got to teach me this one after we get done with this. This is a nice little way to do it. Yeah, it's, it's one of those COVID skills that I've yeah. uh, developed <laughs> the last year. <laughs> Um, okay, so we're talking about access to circulation. Um, so the, the, your, your text about the dedicated truck access is, is no longer accurate. Right. That's right. Okay. Would you do me a favor and revise that for us, just so that our records, this is the only record we have. I mean, we'll have your, your testimony today, but um, we're sort of relying on your text. The extent that your text has been changed, I'd like to have a revision of that, please. Sure, happy to do that. Is that the only, that's the only real contribution I found. But, yeah, okay. and I, I think that's really the only thing that got changed through the through the um, the VTrans process. Yes, tour. Yes, tour, please. Um, now the daily tire deliveries uh, are they going to be coming in on a full size truck? trailer or something smaller um i think uh town fair tire has a variety of trucks in their fleet uh, i think most of the time it's going to be coming in in a box truck um there may be occasional tractor trailer deliveries um but that's that's why we have the circulation around the back to to accommodate the size trucks that uh, may show up at the site okay um and then the sidewalk maintenance agreement does that include uh, plowing in the winter yes snow removal and repair okay and then the um traffic light at uh you know they're coming out of the connor's building and uh burger king are there gonna have to be any changes made to the timing of the signals there no um I think left turn. that that um peak traffic impacts will be less uh, with this development as compared to the steakhouse. So um, there wouldn't really be any reason to adjust the timing. I mean, at, at lunchtime- trans didn't recommend it or- You got the medical offices leaving, you got Burger King full, and then, you know, you're probably gonna have more people picking up their cars at lunchtime, all trying to squeeze a left turn out of there. I don't see how it's going to, you know, and the steakhouse is currently closed or you know, previously was closed at lunchtime. So I, I don't see how that's going to be less during the, you know, the, during the uh, daytime working hours. I'd, I'd like to bring up one, one thing. We do a lot of by appointment and we're, we've been really over the last few years, really doing by appointment. So it is pretty, uh, there's no like rush at 12 o'clock or it's, so you give everybody an appointment, you come in, you know, Get your car and and get your tires put on and then you, then you leave. So we try to stage those appointments so you know the wait time is 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 low. If, and and I should clarify when I'm when I'm talking about traffic impacts, I'm, I'm talking about them in the way that um, traffic engineers typically look at them. You know uh, that there's references for um, that statistical studies of traffic impacts, and generally what you look at is you look at the peak uh, hour in the afternoon of traffic on adjacent streets because that's generally when the biggest impact is so that you know when they're retiming lights that's the kind of information they're looking at so that's when i say less traffic i'm you know it's not in every situation all the time but in, in um, a statistically significant way that we can look at and compare traffic across developments and between developments then we would expect it to be less okay and um just quickly, what is the estimated number of employees you expect to have? Uh, it's a 12 to 15, right, John? All together? Yeah. Okay, thank you. They fit, all fit in that back parking area? Don't ride your bikes there, Pauline. <laughs> yeah. I will well, actually, my bike on that road. Well, that brings up well, a question of mine. 
is those 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 people who do park back there how do they access the building uh, their employees we expect they'd be coming at low traffic times of the day so they would they would walk you know back down the uh, the access road and, and probably to the the side door here uh, to open up the building for the day or close and, it and you were saying that's a fairly steep I was just thinking you know there's snow storage there so they certainly couldn't cut across and then um, yeah is that a fairly steep road um, the roads are uh, maxed out at 10 percent so that's a steep road but it's not um, unreasonably steep Where are your yak tracks to work? Yeah, <laughs> that must be it. <laughs> um, okay, uh, then move this along unless there are additional questions on access and circulation at this time. Um, uh, landscaping and screening. All right. Um, so here, our landscaping plan. Um, because this is a redevelopment of an existing commercial site, um, we've designed the landscaping um, as a best fit uh, un as allowed under Section 3204B of the zoning regulation. And the reason why uh, is a lot because, um, you know, as you may be familiar out behind the steakhouse, there's an existing um, steep bank, uh, and then it continues to go up relatively steeply. Um, except for the flat areas that have been flattened out for the, the drive up here um, to the back. So we're limited in, into how far we can push the building back into the site without creating a major um, earthwork project and, and you know, other kinds of site impacts that are undesirable. Um, so, and, and then we're also limited to the north and south um, by the existing um, development. So. The landscape, the intention of the landscaping design is to, to meet the, the sort of um, spirit of the landscaping uh, provisions in the regulation um, and as much as possible to provide landscaping that um, provides multiple functions that are referenced in the, the landscaping portion of the regulation. So um, we're proposing four trees along the front edge. Um, these are um, Freeman maples. Um, and, and in here, the multiple functions here are both to um, break up and soften the views of the parking and the development from the roadway, um, to provide shade for the sidewalk and to provide shade for the, the front parking area. Um, these are interspersed with some, some low growing shrubs along the front. Um, then we have two more of the Freeman Maples in Curb Islands on the other side of the, the front parking lot. Um, again, for the same reasons, provide shade for the sidewalk, provide shade for the parking and, and um, break up the view of the lot, especially from the front. Um, we have a couple of uh, uh, shrubs uh, here on the island with the Connor lot, um, just to sort of uh, frame out this entrance nicely. Uh, and then we have three large um, linden trees uh, on the south side um, that provide some you know, screening to the side of the building as you're coming um, north and again, you know, shading the parking lot and the um, the um, the sidewalks and things. So um, that's um, kind of where we were headed with the landscaping. Um, you know, it wouldn't, it really wouldn't be possible to meet the letter of the of the landscape regulation on uh, on this site, um, given the, the topography um, and the proposed development, which isn't really um, any more intense than the existing development and, and, and also is you know well within all the um, dimensional standards of the district. Um, so that's that's how we've designed our landscaping here. Um, and then the dumpster and entire storage area back here will have a screening a chain link screening fence with privacy slats um, for screening. Um, I should also mention that there's some significant large trees on the, the, the higher west end of the property here. Um, so the majority of these trees back here will be maintained. So you'll have the same, like right now, if you look at the lot, they kind of have a treed backdrop in the back. So we'll have the same treed backdrop behind the, um, the building, which will help to kind of reduce the visual scale of the building and also um, you know, maintain the sort of um, the setting of the lot itself. 
I have three questions for you, Brian. First of all, those sure. three con those three concrete blocks behind that back parking, what the heck are those? Uh, that's just there to protect the uh, the very propane tank that's behind it. Okay, that was the next question. What that's a propane tank? Is that what it is? Yeah, that's a buried propane tank back there. <laughs> buried? Yes. Okay. There's nothing on this plan that says that's a propane tank. Yeah, it's it's indicated on, on the site plans. So, so concrete blocks are there. And yeah, I see the concrete blocks. Uh, here, propane tank. You're right. It doesn't say buried, but um, I'm providing testimony that it'll be an underground propane tank. Okay. So the concrete blocks are there to protect the underground tank? Yes. Okay. Um, you are removing all that vegetation in the back of the existing building, are you not? Between the stuff that's on the hillside between the steakhouse Correct. and the existing I mean, there's, 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 there's considerable growth there. Pine trees. Yeah, that, as you can see, many of those trees are located within the parking area here. So, um, and then there's going to be significant uh, regrading between the top and the bottom here. So we won't be able to save. Um, will, you, will you be putting any new planting in there? Uh, we weren't proposing plantings in there just because it's, behind the building, really. Okay. Um, the police chief had a concern about your plantings in the front blocking sight distance. Yep, um, I'm, I'm uh, not too concerned about it just because they're set back from the, uh, the edge of the traveled way um, more than 15 feet. So uh, if you look in the this is the, the maple tree that we're proposing. It's kind of got a columnar form um, and the branches start up high. Um, so the trunks of the trees are, are 17 feet back from the edge of the traveled way. Typically you measure sight distance is 15 feet back. Um, and the rest of the shrubs along the front are, are quite low. So we're not um, really anticipating any significant impediment to, to sight distances from those. Well, if you go back to the site plan for me, what I was lacking was where is your stop bar to enter onto um, Route 302? Yeah, that, I think that also needs to be added to the plans. I think it would have to be behind the sidewalk here. So, because I was trying to figure where, where's your stop bar and how does that relate to where the trees are and the bushes are? I see. Um, And I assume there will be a stop sign. Yes. Yeah. I don't see um, that. I don't see a stop sign shown. No, you're you're correct. That needs to be added to the plans, and um, certainly we can do that as you know, condition of approval that we can submit. You know, with the stop bars and signs in the locations that we've discussed. Where would you envision the stop bar? Could you show me where you envision that? You see it before the sidewalk or after the sidewalk? Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting question. Um, I'm concerned if it's before the sidewalk, you might not have sight distance. Right. After the sidewalk, you might be in the road. Well, the edge of the road is is in yeah, you're pretty you know close. here, so I think there would be room to put a stop bar past the sidewalk. I mean, you wouldn't typically want. Um, folks stopping on a sidewalk uh, before they turn out. Um, you know, I think if we place the stop bar behind the sidewalk, people would have an opportunity to stop. Um, and then in reality, could sort of creep forward a little bit more uh, if they needed additional sight distance. Um, you know, I think, I think from a safety perspective, even if folks were stopping back here, so if we're uh, looking at putting a stop bar behind the sidewalk, essentially, and a stop sign here. You know, someone could stop at the right of way uh, and then pull up to the edge of the traveled way and have appropriate sight distances. That would be better for pedestrians if they stopped before the sidewalk. <laughs> sure. Yeah, but if you stop before the sidewalk, I'm worried about the shrubs and the tree. I know. And I don't think the shrubs are tall enough to 
you know, um, block and, you know, to help block view of the building. I mean, I, <laughs> so, I mean, that is a problem. I'd like to see taller shrubs, but then Build. that would be harder. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of things to try and balance on this site. <laughs> uh, certainly. Give that some thought and come back to us with a recommendation of where the stop bar would be. I, I think we want to stop sign and stop bar. Certainly. I think yeah, I'd I mean, like I, to... I would recommend that it, it went behind a sidewalk and then, you know, we could relocate this tree um, a little bit further away uh, from the very, first, the very first one. Yeah. Yeah, this tree, you know, if we sort of um, slid this whole row of three down a little bit. And we could clear out some more space for sight distance there. Because the one on the south end of that island is, in fact, pulled but back. It's in, it's in a way, so that helps. Yeah, and that's because we have the, the pylon sign for the um, ah. for the here yeah. at this location. And then these these boxes here are the stormwater treatment uh, filters, and so they have plantings in them. Um, but these are the location of these are are kind of set by needing to get the um, drainage in along the curb line. Though, so I think what we could do is we could pull these three trees further to the south, um, so that we open up some more sight distance looking uh, south from this location. That makes some sense to me. You have the shrub up there, but move the tree further down. That's a good solution, I think, Brian. Plus, it would give you more shading on your parking spaces. Can I get a question in? Yes, please. So, builder specialty isn't allowed to put a sign down next to the road? Something Berlin doesn't allow, or the state doesn't allow, or something. Mm -hmm. So the only sign that he can have is on the side of the building, which is visible from 302. But I'm worried about those trees being next to New England Label Lane, the one especially on the corner there, and those, I don't know how tall those ones are going to be next to it, but blocking the site view to his sign. Mm -hmm. I not familiar with you have a sign down there. There is um, builder specialty. I guess is not allowed to put a sign down next to the road. I guess so I Berlin thing. To a, a building sign on this building. Is that right, Chuck? Yes, yes. It's right off this the side of the building, specialty. kind of at an angle, so that you can see it from three hundred two. So that's the only visible sign that he can have, I guess, um, according to him. And he, he tried to get a sign down next to the road and that wasn't allowed. So the trees that you have along the shared road, which is New England Label Road, I'm just, I just would like to make sure that they don't block the site to his sign either. Chuck, it's, 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 it, to me, it doesn't make sense why he can't have a sign down at the end on 302 I, I think he'd have to it'd be off property Tom no that's yep. what I'm saying so he'd have to work out that arrangement with that property owner if that property owner already has an existing sign then that no, no it's not possible it, it, the state does not allow I, I could be wrong state does not allow an off property sign period mm -hmm. on top on the state highway I believe that's what he ran into when he tried to put the down there earlier. A state he law. wasn't allowed to do okay. it. Okay, so that's a state thing, not a town. State, a state law. It would, it would be off property because he doesn't own any property down there. Right. We could we could eliminate those three trees so it doesn't block it. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> well, if they're short enough, it won't bother. I'm talking, are you talking about the three trees on the okay. side of the easement? Those, uh, yeah, there. those yeah. three trees, and then maybe the one right there, right on that, right where your cursor is. Uh, this one? Down next to the road, yeah, where that, right by the sewer, by the drain there. Yeah, this? Yeah. 
I don't know how high they will become so that they might possibly block his. Where's sign. the sign? Where's the sign you're referring to? Up on the building. It's up on the building, up on Builder Specialty Building. That's, 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 a, that's a far way to see that sign. But you can see it. You can see it from the road fine. It's just, it's the only way anyone knows he's there. Most people don't even know that building is there. I don't think I don't think the solution is to eliminate this landscaping. No, but maybe you could. But maybe change the trees. Maybe you could show an elevation of you know the site angle or something from the road up to the building, and that the trees okay. don't block it. Any trees. Um. Tom, any thoughts? No, I don't. I, again, I, I, the landscape plan is here is, is uh, minimal at best, and to eliminate anything that I think would be detrimental to this to this project. Well, isn't the building up on up on a slope, so it is higher, it, right? It is. It is. So maybe if they're you know the trees aren't too tall, mm -hmm. you can still have the trees, but they won't block the sign. And these trees are going to. Is there something that can show that? But if you're on the road, you don't have that sight distance. You're you're being blocked. So even if they're if even if they're eight feet tall, you've now blocked the vision out of a vehicle to see the sign. Is that a retail location? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, he does some retail stuff up there. I didn't even think it was a retail shop anymore. I thought he just did anyway. He does kitchens. I mean, it's not like there's a he's, lot of traffic, but it's his only, in. even if he's trying to tell somebody where it he is, it's his only, he has a showroom and all that there. So yeah. he does, he does have customers there. My only other question is the, the tire storage, is that covered? Yeah. The, 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 um, the used tire storage, is that covered? Yes, we, we provide, um, similar to to a carport would but it has covered uh slatted cover slats around the side okay i was just kind of worried about uh water and tires and bugs and stuff like that depending on how long they sit there no we 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 roof put a roof over them we've been doing that for a while are you concerned with sight yeah there's nothing on these plans that indicates there's a roof there trees Accident. Brian. Yeah, um, no, I don't know that I, when we submitted the application, I don't know that I was aware that that was a roof structure. So what is it, just a, a um, like a shed type roof? Yeah, it'd be a gable type. Pole barn? Gable, gable type. Yeah, gable. Pole, yeah. Okay. And how high would that be? Uh, it sits at the its highest point, probably nine feet, and and you know at the peak, and then the the eave walls are like seven feet. Okay, there's no side walls. It's chain link with slats, right? Or I or I stockade them, cover it with stockade fence. But typically chain link with slats. Yes. Um, any other comments with regard to landscaping and screening? Uh, okay, let's proceed with outdoor lighting. So, uh, outdoor lighting includes uh, six pole mount lights. Uh, so there are two in the front parking, uh, two in the side parking, one along the rear, and then one um, up uh, by the tire storage area, and uh, eight building mounted lights, so two on each face of the building. Uh, the pole heights are proposed to be mounted at 18 feet above grade, and the building lights are proposed to be mounted at 16 feet above grade. Um, they're all LED fixtures, um, downcast, fully cut off optics, um, 
you're probably familiar with this light fixture. I've seen it going in in a lot of uh, developments, this Beacon Viper. Um, and then this uh, cutoff wall pack is the light fixture proposed for on the building. Um, so we're in lighting zone two and all the outdoor lights are class two lighting for uh, lighting up parking lots and walkways. Um, average illumination level on the site is 1.4 foot candles. Um, and we've got um, typical um, max to min and average to min or average to max ratios. Um, so we've got good uniformity. Um, lighting is proposed to be controlled with a timer uh, so that it can be uh, shut off uh, at the appropriate times based on the zoning regulations. Um, and then we would uh, propose the two, two pole lights adjacent to uh, US 302 would shut off 30 minutes after business. Um, and then the remaining lights would dim to 50% from 30 minutes after business to 11 p.m. Um, we did also receive a request from the uh, chief of police uh, in his review of the project to um, install motion sensors on the lights uh, so that if there's activity on the um, property overnight, um, that it's easier for the police to see. So um, Town for Tire would be willing to uh, install motion sensors on, on the lights if the, uh, the board sees fit. So you will be adding motion sensors? Uh, it, so it was a recommendation from the police chief. And uh, if, if the board finds that acceptable, then we would like to add motion sensors. I think it makes sense. Me too. Especially in the back of the building, those lights back there and with storages, I would think you would want them to become activated. Still being on a timer, but um, would you be putting most sensors on? Right. So if, if there's activity on the site after 11 p.m. when the lights are completely off or um, likely in the period when they dim 50%, if there if there's um, motion sense, they'd come up to full brightness so that, you know, one, discourages activity and two, allows uh, law enforcement to see what's happening back there. I was uncertain why you were dimming the lights 50%. I didn't understand the logic for that. Um, I mean, it's, it's um, I think there was a section in the, the regs that may have recommended that, but it's, um, it's a typical thing that happens with commercial developments. I've seen it a lot now. So there, there is some light still, but it's less, um, it's less lit up when the building's not closed or not open, I'm sorry, when the store is not open. Um, so it's sort of splitting the difference between having some security lighting during the time when folks are, you know, most likely to be around and active and not having full-blown lights on until late in the night. Well, if you put a motion sensor on it, you wouldn't need 50%. You would have... Yeah, that's true. It can, it can sometimes be a little um, more annoying for the lights to go from off to on if the motion sensor gets tripped than if they go from 50% to all the way on. Um, it's not as much of a concern here because, you know, that's if you have residential neighbors or something, it can be yeah. annoying. It's not as much. I, mean, I don't have a problem with it. I just didn't quite understand the, the logic. But I, that was also before I understood you didn't have motion sensors. With motion sensors, I think you now would have that additional security. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, John, but I think, you know, either operation would, would be acceptable if, if there's an issue. Definitely. That's easy enough to accommodate. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on outdoor lighting? I just have a question about the lighted signs. Are they going to be also turned off after hours? We're getting to that right now, Paul. Okay. It's, the next, it's the next criteria, Paul. Okay. Well, huh? I was just thinking of light, but yeah. Yeah, no, good, good point, <laughs> but... Um, I actually had a question to go before that. My question before that on um, your sign question was, uh, are we approving the sign question or is Tom Wadowski, the zoning administrator approving the signs? They've made them as part of this application, Paul. Okay, so we're reviewing them? Yes. Okay. okay. Any, anything additional on outdoor lighting? Well, we just, ki just curious as to why there's no lighting in those back parking spaces. Seems like 
uh, dark is when people will be using them. <laughs> yeah, um, so this, this pole light actually will provide some lighting to these parking spaces back here. Um, so, you know, again, we're, we're trying to not excessively light the, um, the whole lot if we could avoid doing it. But there will be light back there is what you're saying. But yeah, there's a pole light here and that, that will provide some light to this, this entire yeah. area up here. Hmm. There's, there's also the light between that parking and the building, which at 16 feet in elevation will also be providing some lighting back there. Yeah. yeah. I think they're all forward throw optics, so you might not get a lot out of this one. But, you okay. know, again, we just were trying to be sensitive in our light design mm -hmm. and not not light up the whole lot if it wasn't necessary. No, I think it's a good lighting plan. So Tom, since this board has not reviewed a sign under the new sign ordinance yet, we're looking for you for guidance on this. I'm sorry, Bob, I lost my, my Ear buds. What did you say? <laughs> I said this board has never reviewed a sign application under the new zoning ordinance. So we're looking for your guidance on signs. So both the wall mounted sign and their uh, ground mounted signs meets the town of Berlin regulations for the commercial district. Thank you. Did anybody have any questions on those two signs? No, I was just. One question was about the lighting of the signs and whether that's going to be turned off at night. Yeah, they'll be turned off. John? Yeah, they'll be they'll be turned off, you know, I guess whenever what's the is there a condition like 10 o'clock? You know, in the zoning regulation, Brian, is there yeah, I don't. I don't recall seeing a, a restriction on the hours for illuminated signs. Tom is. Just, but yeah. but, but we, we we typically shut them off at ten o'clock. We don't, you know, we're because we're only open to, to eight o'clock. I believe is our yeah. latest latest night. I would think you'd want to turn them off when you close, so people would know you're closed. I think they're representing ten o'clock. It makes sense. I mean, they're 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 not necessarily saying they're open. They're saying that's where they are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's all by timer, and you know, it's just you know, so they can it can be adjusted, but it's just easier if all the stores go off at ten o'clock. That's all. All right. Your testimony is it will go off at ten o'clock. Okay. Yep. Thank you. That's both the building sign and the state freestanding sign. Correct. Thank you. Any other questions or comments with regard to signs? Uh, performance standards. There's, there's no real impact uh, under the performance standards. It's uh, all standard um, commercial building uh, systems here. Um, all, all maintenance of vehicles are performed inside. All hazardous materials are stored inside. Um, we've, we've talked about the tire storage and, and how that, uh, you know, will be uh, protected from rainfall and, and runoff and, and that kind of stuff. So we're not anticipating any significant impact under the performance standards. Um, now, you're going to be doing oil changes? Yeah. Yes. So where you, where's your oil storage? We put an oil storage tank inside the bay. It's usually, well, it's probably going to be the bay on the right side. If you're uh, left side, if you're facing the front. And usually you put a 275 gallon tank inside the building that gets comes and gets pumped out when it's full. And that's not our main business. We're just, because we're just trying to be competitive in the area because most, you know, most of the tire guys around do do some service work and we're just trying to be competitive. That's above ground storage, I presume. Correct, above ground. 
any comments or questions on performance standards? Erosion control and stormwater treatment. Uh, so we have applied for both uh, construction erosion control under general permit 39020 and operational stormwater uh, permit under general permit 39050. Um, so those those applications design is complete applications are in and we can forward the permits to the to the town uh, when they're issued. And obviously your permit will be conditioned on those. Um, I'm interested, however, in knowing what your stormwater treatment is, if you would give me a rundown. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so essentially, uh, the, the, there is a very small increase of impervious uh, between the existing site and the, new, the proposed site. Um, in fact, we only ended up in jurisdiction. Um, the, the, the net increase in impervious is less than 5,000 square feet. Um, but the, if you count up just you know, pervious that's converted to impervious, it was um, around 9,000 square feet. So that's where we got into stormwater jurisdiction. Um, because this site has a direct discharge to the closed drain system to the Stevens branch, it's actually exempt under the state stormwater um, regulations for flood control. However, um, BTRANS requested that there be no increase in the 10 or the 50 year storm. So those, those were the sort of large storm events that we were designing the site to. Um, there'll be two concrete uh, vault based um, bioretention uh, filters uh, on, on the front parking lot. Um, so that drains the front parking lot. And then a, this, this one actually drains a significant chunk of, of this area as well. Um, so those are a, a proprietary system that's done by um, Contact Main. Um, they have a filter media and they have uh, planting in them. So it, um, it filters the stormwater. Uh, as well, uh, you know, provides the adequate water quality treatment for the site, as well as um, provides a small amount of um, retention, which is how we're managing um, our, our larger storms so that we don't have any increase in, in peak discharge. Brian, did you say contact? Who was? Who yeah, contact. Broken? Yeah. Yep. So, how do you provide retention? So the, the filters uh, have a little bit of headroom inside them. Um, so there's some retention that happens inside the filters. They, they fill up and then the, the um, stormwater drains out a little more slowly. We only needed a tiny little bit of retention because um, we were only making a very small increase in impervious um, over the existing lot. This, this is a fairly large amount of impervious area in an area of the town of Berlin where there's a lot of impervious area, all of which is not treated. Um, in other words, there's almost no retention down here and this is almost no treatment. I, I'm kind of disappointed the state doesn't require a little bit more than that. Um, I realize you're, you're not worsening conditions, but there's no opportunity to make improvements to these conditions here? Um, I mean, the, it, it is going to be a small improvement over what's there now. It's going to provide some treatment where there's no treatment, and, and there are very small reductions in, in flows and in peak storms. But, um, you know, without going to a significant uh, um, underground system, there's really um, no place to put treatment on this uh, site. Everything comes down from the west to the east. Um, and then there's significant uh, utility, um, existing underground utilities all along the frontage. There's three sewer lines owned by the town of Berlin. There's the municipal, um, sorry, the state-owned stormwater system. Um, you know, so without providing a, a significant underground retention under the parking lot, um, there's there's limited opportunity to um, do additional stormwater treatment here. The pipe that you're discharging into, is that a state-owned pipe or is that a privately owned pipe? So at the, we're discharging, at the point we're discharging, it's privately owned. Uh, it's on the Connor lot and, and we've obviously talked to them about it and are um, negotiating the appropriate easements and so forth. Um, but then it directly discharges into this catch basin here where it becomes the state-owned system. Um, and that was all reviewed by VTrans as part of the letter of intent process. You know where that discharges? 
Yeah, it goes to the north. And then I, based on the mapping that I found, it actually goes underneath the little um, strip building that has like the, um, the pet store and the- um, That's what I thought, yeah. Wood stove store and all that. And then directly discharges to the Stevens branch. Yep. So the only treatment detention you're providing are those two catch basins there. Yeah. Will, will there be uh, actually but, will it be surcharging into those parking spaces? They uh, they have integrated overflow, um, so they have the capacity to pass uh, up to the ten year storm. Um, if if the uh, when the storage gets overwhelmed. Where does the overflow go to? Into the underground drainage piping. Uh, so it's a little hard to see, um, but there's a, there's a dual outlet, one from a, an under drain in front of the media and then the overflow pipe that just go directly into this new um, 15 inch HCP out in the front here. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have questions on erosion control and stormwater treatment? Mr. Chair, I know it's, uh, it's uh, I think Brian's going to finish his testimony up here. I do want to add that um, the Berlin Public Sports Board has looked at a wastewater allocation here. And so there's adequate wastewater allocation from the uh, Berlin Public Sports Board. And I uh, believe the uh, City of Montpelier services the potable water here. And I, I believe that they have given an allocation to this project as well. Yes. Yep. Yeah, and I would imagine your requirements for water and sewer are actually less than the existing structure. I'm sure, yeah. It is on wastewater. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, okay. Uh, I think that's all our criteria. Does anybody have any further comments or questions regarding this application? No. Polly? Yeah, well, I guess the fire the fire department made some recommendations. Good um, point. So they made a recommendation for a fire alarm system, and I guess the police made a recommendation for security and video too. Yeah. Yes, we install security, and we definitely install fire alarm. Okay. Then fire alarm will be monitored by the department. I don't know if they monitor it, but if they do, it will be. But sometimes it goes through Central Station, who calls. Oh, okay. I don't know how. In other words, works. it's it's sternly monitored. The call goes out from the building. Yeah, it'll go out. Somebody'll get the call, whether it goes direct or through a Central Station. Can you please provide us with that information? Where it goes. Yep. Good, good catch, Tony. Anything else? Um, I, I should actually bring up, this is uh, related to the, to the Connor lot. Um, Fred Connor had put in a, a letter um, after having some conversation with Tom um, regarding the work on, on their lot. Um, you know, he's not, uh, he's not signed onto this application or anything, but um, has requested a determination that this, the work on the Connor lot is, is simply following through with a, permit condition um, as is required by the zoning regulations, a permit condition from, from VTRANS and um, has requested that uh, the board make a determination whether an administrative review would be required or not uh, for this, the work on the Connor lot. That determination actually would be made by the zoning administrator. And, and I, could do, I could do that under a minor site plan amendment, Brian. Okay. Still, does he still need to make an application to you, Tom? I think so. Yeah. But it's, it's again, it's a minor. I, I think you just use these plans and have Connor request it. Okay. okay. Well, if it's so if it's determination that? through Tom, then, then we won't waste the board's time here. And, and I, you know, we can communicate with Tom directly. Yeah, I, I, I don't see this rising to the board's attention. Am I correct on that, Tom? That's correct. All right, thank you. 
Thank you. Um, is there any further testimony you want to offer tonight, Brian? Uh, I think that would conclude our testimony for tonight. Any further questions by board members? Comments by board members? Questions by interested parties? Are they still here? Yes, they're still, yep, Chuck's still here. Okay, thank you. Chuck, anything, any questions, friends, questions from you? I think I'm all set. Thank you. Um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn or recess. So moved, John. Second. Okay, motion's been made to close the warm portion of this hearing. Is that correct? Yes. Seconded. Any discussion on that motion? All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> aye. Carla, are you with us? I said aye. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, this hearing is closed. I thank you all for your time. Appreciate it. Board has one other item or two or more items of business here to go through. Um, so uh, after you leave us, we have some minutes to review and approve. Um, and I think while we're sort of departing here, uh, I'll, we'll do the minutes. Uh, Tom, you signing everybody out? Well, there's still a public part of the. the okay, the good, good point. Good point. Don't stick around. All right. Uh, we have the minutes of the meeting of 11 17. It's been a long time since we've had a meeting. It really has. <laughs> um, uh, I I made some edits to those and forward them to everybody. Yeah. And Polly also made some edits to those. Um, and I think Christy has incorporated all those edits. Mm -hmm. In fact, in the new findings for uh, right. that applicant. Um, so I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes subject to those amendments. Okay, Polly makes the motion. Is there a second? John? Uh, yes, second. Tom, did you have something? Nope, I was just recognizing John. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I see him. <laughs> he looks familiar. <laughs> all right. Um, all those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 And the minutes are approved as amended. Thank you. Um, so here's where I would intend the motion to go to the deliberative session. So move to the tour. Tour, tour makes the motion. Carla seconded. Carla seconded. Um, all those in favor of that motion to go into the liberal session, please signify by, signify by saying aye. 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 And we will go into the liberal session now. Thank you. Is everybody Hold else, got, everybody else off, Tom? Hold on, I'm putting them. Okay. I think everybody's back. Okay, well, do we have any other business to come before this board tonight? If not, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So move, this is the tour. Second. <laughs> motion, motion by tour, second by John. Uh, is there, you don't discuss the motion to adjourn. <laughs> Damn. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Board is adjourned. Have a good evening, guys. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. Bye bye. Bye.